Kevin or Grant Cardone? Grant Cardone. Oh. Go easy on me. I know what I'm doing. Let's go! Hi! Kevin with Meet Kevin here, and we're going to talk about a specific example of 10 units versus 5 single family houses. So I brought Lauren in this pine cone, the pine cone to distract Jack. Here you go, Jack! Go play! Go play, little one! Oh, no, 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 don't throw. <laughs> you got another pine cone? That's for me. I'll take it. Bring it on over here. Go ahead, I'll put it in storage, all right? Go, go find some more. Go ahead, go ahead, I'll, I'll keep this one safe, okay? You go find some more. I'm a licensed realtor myself, and I've been working with my mother, who's been doing property management for over 30 years, so her expertise definitely is flowing through me uh, and my knowledge, if you will. So let's actually set it up with some numbers. Let's say you have the opportunity to buy a 10-unit building that has 10 two-bedroom, one-bath units each worth about $300,000 divided up. Let's contrast that with owning five single family dwellings worth $600,000 each, also for a total market value of $3 million. Remember, it's very easy for people to say, well, why would you buy one single family? Why don't you buy a tenplex? Well, wait, wait a minute, the comparison needs to be five single families to one tenplex, right? They should be of equal value to have a fair comparison. Let's also quickly establish what the rents would be. So five single families at $600,000 in a similar area as a 10 unit building would probably each rent for about $2,600 per month, totaling $13,000. Similarly, those two bedroom, one baths in a similar area would likely rent for about $1,300 each, also totaling $13,000. Now let's get into the comparison. Hey, we're talking about units for single families here. Where are you going? You want to look for little balls coming off the tree? Maybe we should eat them. No. <laughs> no? They eat me. Oh look, there's mom. Hey, what are you doing? We're supposed to be having a conversation here. It's not happening. It's not happening thanks to Max? Yeah. So let's make it fast because we got a starving baby and we got a two and a half year old. So. First things first, people go, hey, if you buy a single family, your single family is 100% vacant. Lauren, what do you think about that? I think that one of your, say, however many units, say eight or 10 units, if one of them is vacant, it's 100% vacant too. In other words, it's all about comparing market value. Sure, if you only have one $3 million house and that goes vacant, absolutely, yeah, that makes sense. But if you have a $3 million tenplex compared to five $600,000 houses, not really fair to say, oh, you have a single family, one of them's vacant, it's 100% vacant. So point one was the myth of being 100% vacant. The other thing that comes up is, well, how long is a property going to be vacant for? Lauren, what do you think about that? I think it's all about price. If it's properly priced, you can get a qualified tenant within a week or less. I've had uh, a property go on the market and it's rented the next day to a completely qualified tenant. Uh, so whether it's a unit or it's a single family home, uh, it's equally easy in a sense to rent it out. It's just all a matter of price. Gross, Jack. You have to have both. You got to have one single family and you got to have some units, huh? <laughs> Tim Bush. Hey. Yeah. Where's over there? Where is it? Where's what? Third point. What about turnover? Let's talk a little bit about how often these units come up for rent compared to houses. The turnover rate of a single family home versus a unit is where I start really leaning towards liking to manage the single family homes. People don't typically want to stay in a two-in-one or a one-in-one -one that long in their life. Usually people want to get married, have a kid, and the two-in-one or one-in-one -one situation isn't good for that. So when you have a single family home, the people are more likely to stay. This could work for, you know, a three and two condo as well. It's just a matter of kind of the bedroom situation or being detached versus sharing walls. I've had tenants, uh, or my mom has, who again has worked for 30 years in property management, where they have stayed in a three and two for like 18 years and they're completely qualified. They have great credit, great income. They're just not buyers for whatever the reason may be. And it's been great. Kevin, I did it. So we're all for diversifying. We don't want you to have just one rental property and all of a sudden that property's vacant and you're right. Yeah, if you only have one rental property, then you as a whole are 100% vacant. If you have multiple single families or multiple units, whether they're in one building or not, 
then you don't have to worry about being 100% vacant. See, where vacancy factor comes from is commercial thinking. In commercial, it's okay to have, here's my strip mall and it's 90% filled. Well, in residential, you should never have a goal of being 90% filled. Your goal should be 100% filled all the time. If you have a vacancy, you fill that as soon as possible, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yes. and like I said before, it's it's very easy to fill a vacancy even if it's a bad time of year or a bad market. It's all about price. So Jack, I gotta tell you something. Something else to think about when you're comparing units over four units, so like five units or 10 units, all in one building, compared to residential one to four, is the financing is much more difficult. You usually need 35% down uh, to 50% down. Uh, and you generally don't get a 30 year fixed rate loan. You usually end up with some kind of adjustable rate mortgage for a seven or 10 year term with a balloon payment. Camera. Oh yeah, this is the camera. You're right, Jack. Which is a little bit more risky. Come right there, camera. Okay, let's do it. Whereas on a single family or a duplex or triplex, you can get some 30 year fixed rate financing. Much safer, no balloon payments. You could get in with 5% down, 20% down, really whatever you want. It's all the way down to 3% down if you're a regular buyer or 0% down if you're VA. <laughs> Careful, Jack. So let's call the fifth and final point deals. Where can you get the best deal? Yep, camp. Well, here's the thing anything over five units, you're usually competing against 1031 investors. These are people who are doing an exchange coming out of units and they're looking for other units, whether it's a different location or up in value or up in unit size. Maybe they own eight plex and they're going to a 10 plex or they're trying to increase the quality. The issue with that is these are generally people who don't care about the condition of the units. They look at what's my price per door, what's the rent I can get, and if I need to put paint into it, I don't care. The Jack, that's gross. That's, that's really gross. <laughs> with single family deals, here's something that's really, really cool. You could actually get great deals on these because most of your competition is deathly afraid of doing paint, carpet, and basic repairs. They might say they're okay doing paint and carpet, but then they go into a place that has stained carpet and horrible paint. Other realtors will affirm this. People shut down. And that is where the opportunity is to actually get some equity in your deals. Get a deal that has equity. Get a deal that has upside in it. If you're going strictly for units, you're gonna be up against more turnover, more difficult financing, and a harder time getting a good deal. So these are just some quick five tips on what our thoughts are in terms of units versus single families. Don't touch that, that's gross. So what's a recommendation if you really wanna have units? Try to get units that have at least two bathrooms, like two and twos and threes and twos. Three bedroom, two bath, two bedroom, two bath. Because then you minimize the odds of having constant turnover, which ironically leads to more vacancy, right? Every time you have turnover, you have to do repairs, you have a vacancy period. If you have a single family and people stay for five years at a time, that's way better than having yearly turnover or once every two year turnover. My mom, as an example, my mom and dad had a 10plex that they owned for, I think, about 10 years. And it was driving my mom insane because it was mostly studios and mostly one-in-ones. And there was literally a turnover all the time going on. It was nonstop. Have that in comparison to a single-family home, like Kevin said, where the people stay there for years and years. Well, Jack decided not to get the ball. No interest in getting ball. Kevin, on the other hand, high interest in getting ball. No interest. You just want a rotten orange? Yeah, same. So I don't think this is to say that you should be anti-units. If you can get a great deal on units, go for it. it. Especially if you can get into like a duplex or triplex or fourplex where you can get 30 year financing, absolutely do it. As soon as you go above five units, financing sucks. Come on, Jack, we gotta go. Yeah, there's the orange tree, you're right. Uh, as a, an actual example, so the units, they share the walls, you know, and single family homes do not, and there are pros and cons to both. I'd say there are more pros for the single family homes. But anyway, I literally had a complaint and a neighbor feud because one of the units was having very loud romantic relations and it was disturbing the below unit and her kids. So how do you make that phone call? Hey, stop having loudly. <laughs> it, was, it was hard. <laughs> there are a whole lot more reasons here. This is just kind of like a brief thing. If you haven't considered these five things, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, in the meantime, here's a leaf. Do you want to give the camera the leaf? Jack, do you want to stand on the stroller? No. no. I got you the stand and infant car seat stroller for a reason and he doesn't want to go in it. Doesn't even use it. Jack, Jack, I'll give you some chocolate if you stand right there. This is how you parent, alright? Right. If you stand stand right here, put your head under here and stand there, 
and then you're gonna ride it and I'll give you some chocolate, okay? Hold on, okay? All right. See, anytime you need to figure out how to use something, you just call Kevin, all right? Meet Kevin, that's right. Yeah, it's really working. <laughs> And if you made it to the end of this video, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the presence of me.